Welcome to the video tutorial for Fakebook on ClassTools.net. Fakebook is set up to mimic Facebook. It's a fake site. It's not Facebook, but it's a fake site that allows you to create Facebook profiles for uh, different people or places or events that you're studying. So we're going to get started and we're going to build a Facebook page um, on Fakebook so you can kind of see how it works. One thing I want to just note to you right off the top as kind of a downside to this site is there are a lot of ads. Um, you'll see here at the, up at the top there's ads and there's ads along this right column here. They don't go away unless you buy a premium account, unless you pay for the premium account, which I don't really suggest you do. Uh, but once you get used to this, the fact that they're there, you know, they kind of just blur into the background. Um, I've been on it a couple times here and there, logged on and off, and they're never inappropriate ads or anything like that. Most of them are for books or online learning or degrees, mostly educational in nature. So um, anyway, just to put that out there is, is kind of a downside. So we're going to get started. Um, we're going to build a fake book page for Martin Luther King Jr. just to pick a well-known person so we can kind of see how this works. So the students would put the name of whoever they're going to build their fake book page for. Um, so we're doing Martin Luther King. And once they submit it, fake book will pull from Google Images without you even going to Google Images based on your the words that you put in. It'll, it kind of has a smart technology there where it'll just find pretty much what you're looking for. It's not 100%, but every time I've tried it, it's pulled up the right picture. So what that does is cut down on the students surfing the web looking for the perfect picture. Now you can upload your own picture if you want to, but um, it kind of just cuts down on all that time that they're spending looking for pictures, and Facebook will just pull pictures at work. So I put in my, my title, and then I'm going to edit my profile um, for Martin Luther King. Okay, so what I want to do, what the students would be doing is going and researching about Martin Luther King or whoever they picked and finding some information about them. So I've just pulled up Wikipedia. Um, I don't, they would probably have this information ahead of time, but I'm just going to copy his birthday. And when I go in here to click on the click edit profile, I'm going to put some information about him, just some general things here, and I've pasted in his birthday. Um, and you can kind of just, you know, have requirements of what's supposed to be in there. Um, for his occupation, I'm going to say he was a clergyman, activist, and prominent leader in the American rights, African American uh, civil rights movement. All right, and so that stuff is going to come up on his profile, and you can add, you know, as many facts in there as you want to, or as much information as you want to. All right, then Martin Luther King should also have some friends. So to add some friends, I'm going to put in people I know he would be friends with. And you can see how Fakebook is kind of searching it for you. So I typed in Rosa Parks, and it automatically pulls up a picture of Rosa Parks. Now I could go find my own picture, but it just cuts down on the time that you need to go find stuff. It just pulls it in right there for you. Okay, from my research, I would have other friends that I know lived at the time of Martin Luther King were in association with him uh, through different organizations and events. So I would add those names in. So I'm going to add um, a couple of his friends just to show you how this works. All right, and here's where you see that, you know, the students would be researching these people and finding the appropriate friends to add. You don't obviously want Martin Luther King friends with Oprah Winfrey, you know, that doesn't make sense historically. So you want them to be adding friends that are appropriate for the person that they're featuring, the profile that they're... Okay, so once you have your friends in there, you're going to add a post, um, you know, something that you would post on your Facebook page. So to do that, you just click add a post. You can dump in um, videos from YouTube or you can just write in a message, same as the real Facebook. And you can change who the author is. So you can have um, the person whose profile page it is post on their page, but you can also have their friends post on their page, uh, just like Facebook works. So you're just going to put something in here that fits with the time frame that you're creating the profile page about or the person you're creating the profile page about. So I'm just going to have Martin Luther King uh, make a comment here. Okay, so uh, Martin Luther King is discussing uh, Claudette Colvin, who was a 15-year-old girl um, who violated the bus segregation laws and so he's starting the conversation about the boycott that's going to happen and the things that are coming. Um, you'd also want to put in the date that would be appropriate for this event. So I'm going to put March 3rd, 1955. 
as opposed to the today's date. All right, once I have it in, I can put an image in if I want to, just like you can post a picture to Facebook, or I can just write my comment and share it. Okay, and you can see it looks just like Facebook when, when you add the comment in. And then you can add another post um, to have somebody respond to his comment, just like you would on Facebook. So in this case, I'm going to change the author from Martin Luther King to some, somebody who was living at that time period, one of his friends possibly, that's going to respond. It'll pull up kind of the friends that you have listed in there. So you'll have to type the whole thing. Once you start typing a little bit, it'll pull up who you're probably looking for. And she's going to respond, too, to this comment. Okay, just like in Facebook, you can also have somebody comment on a post. So let's say we want to have Fred Gray, one of the friends, um, comment on Joanne Robinson's post. So we're going to change this name here from Martin Luther King to Fred Gray. And then he's going to make a comment um, to what she's saying. All right, and if you don't put a date, it looks like it's a, they'll, they'll put earlier today or, or kind of a generic phrase. Um, so I'm just going to put the date. And add comment. All right, and so you can start to build the conversation and the profile page to, to mimic what those people would have been discussing and addressing at that time period. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty cool to watch this build. And you actually, the students really have to know a lot about the time period and about who would say what and how they would say it and what their take would be. So you can really kind of get them to delve into the different personalities of an event by trying to determine what they would comment and what, how they would respond to something. So I'm just going to keep building this page out a little bit. I'm going to have uh, Joanne respond. Okay, so she responds. And then maybe as the conversation builds, um, you know, Martin Luther's going to weigh back in with another post to, to his Facebook page. Okay, and then people can like that like they would on Facebook. They can like that comment to show that they're going to come or that they, you know, like the idea of it. So to do that, they're, you're going to click on comment. You're going to have whoever you want to have uh, like it. And to do that, you just type likes this into the box and add comment. And it's going to show up just like it does on Facebook with the thumbs up. If she didn't like it, it would do the thumbs down. So it really starts to look like Facebook, and the students start to create the historical context of a Facebook page of a certain time period. Okay, because this is um, an educational Facebook and not a real Facebook, you know, students might make a mistake here and there. Like, for example, um, this 18-year-old, to talk about the 18-year-old Mary Lewis Smith who was arrested, this really should actually be in December. So as I researched more, I realized I had the dates wrong. So if a student has that same situation, what they can do is go in and click on this little pencil bar and edit uh, whatever they typed in. So I'm actually going to make this December 1st. I think it's December 1st. Let me just check. Oh, October 21st. So I'm going to go in and actually change this to uh, October 21st, which is a more accurate description of when that happened. All right, and I'm going to change this one too. And because this is a, a, a product, a project that they're creating, they're going to get graded on it, they do need to be able to go in and edit things that they might have put in uh, mistakenly. Okay, So you can always go in and change the dates or change anything that, that you want to make it more accurate. So now, um, maybe in my Facebook page, time has gone by, they haven't been posting the Facebook, whatever. I'm going to have Martin Luther King now post... Um, a video of him talking about the Montgomery bus boycott. While it's kind of, it's already been started and it's a little bit into full swing, um, just to show you how to post a video, but we'll keep it kind of consistent with the historical information. Okay, so I want him to also post a video of himself talking about the Montgomery bus boycott. So I have it here on YouTube. I'm just going to copy the link. I'm going to click into the URL, copy the link. 
and then I'm going to go back to my fake book page and I'm going to just paste the link in and I'm going to put the date uh, I'm just going to put December and I'm going to share it okay and just like in on Facebook the video will appear um, right onto my fake book page okay so that's basically how you build out your page and how you create this dialogue among historical characters you can then save your um, fake book page if I hit save here it's going to give me a spot for a password um, there's no logins or anything to this it's all just kinda open so to save it and go back and edit it later you, you don't log in as yourself or create an account you just get this specific URL that you go to and you put in your password so I'm gonna make my password Roundsley so I can remember it and I'm gonna submit it and it says my page has been given a u unique URL it's a unique address on the web and it's going to reload to that page and I probably want to take that URL copy and paste it into an email to myself or for students into a word document that they can save so they can go back and edit it later okay so I'm gonna say okay it's redirecting me now it's loading everything I've worked on all class period alright and I would copy that link this is my unique URL at classtools.net and I would just paste that somewhere to remind myself of what it is and then I can go back to it when I go back to it I have to put the password in in order to edit um, but that's kind of a nice feature to be able to go back and edit that later um, you can also embed it if you click on embed it'll give you the code to put on your web page so if you had a student do a real great example of a fake book page and you wanted to put it on your website as an example um, you could do that very easily by just embedding it onto your page there's also over here a help sheet which will pull up um, just sort of a little tutorial guide that tells you what everything is it, it gives it kind of numbers it out to give you an idea of what you should be doing first so first you create a, a name and then you edit the profile and you and you build from there so if you just follow the numbers or if you handed this out to your students as directions um, it would be everything that they would need to get started in their in their project so the reason I really like this site is because um, creating a Facebook page is a really great way to assign something assign it to students a real life example of project but you don't get bogged down in all of the design it, it does it all for you so really what they focus on is the content because they have to determine who the friends are and what the conversation would be but they don't have to get bogged down in finding the pictures of the friends and um, creating videos or anything like that it all just works just as easily as Facebook which is why kids like Facebook because it's easy and it's fast and it's sort of a instant um, gratification type site so fake book is a great way to assign a project it's fun it's um, high, I think you have to have some higher level thinking skills to actually create a, a fake book page that makes sense so I would suggest it you can also if you go to the the main fake book page um, if you scroll down to the bottom you can see fake book pages that have been created by other students and you can use them in your teaching or as examples um, if you scroll over them you'll see right here the name of who it is and so you can um, just kinda go through and see if anything you're studying or teaching is is uh, has a fake book page here's Helen Keller let's pull that up see what their fake book page looks like alright and it's it's pretty cool you can kinda go through and see um, other students ideas of what conversations would have been like historically speaking and what people would have said to each other who they thought their friends would have been um, and things like that and you can even have an assignment where you go through and and kind of rate or grade uh, fake book pages in terms of accuracy and and stuff like that so that's how fake book works I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching